So this presentation is being recorded so that um, everybody else can have access to it later on. And now let me share my screen. All right, anybody, I mean, everybody can see the screen and hear me fine. Yes, good night. Um, and April has raised her hand. April, was that uh, on purpose? That was a mistake, my, I'm sorry. Okay, all right, Um. great. Well, welcome to the third committee meeting. So today is March 14. Um, and today we have a guest speaker from the um, Office of um, the Department of Environment Protection and Sustainability to talk to us about the um, three programs that are available in the county and also any type of um, of grants. So let me go to the agenda quickly. Um, in a bit, we'll go into the welcome and introduction just to see to check in who's here. Um, and then later, Carrie from DEPS will be talking to us about the um, the three programs and grants that are available. I had um, received some proposed locations for streetscape improvement. So we will be reviewing that. Um, I have to say that, you know, from the last meeting, it hasn't been too long. Um, I think it was what, two weeks ago. Um, so I didn't get a lot of proposal, uh, which is fine, um, but we'll review that. And hopefully by the end of this meeting, we need to come up with a, with a decision. Um, I feel like um, we need to come up with a decision now because it takes time between, you know, just going through the whole process of, you know, bidding or um, coming with a vendor, um, trying to order. Like, for example, from past experience, um, we have ordered benches and that takes about 12 to 14 weeks. So if we want something to be, you know, ready for summer, um, I think we need to act now. And also just the trash cans. Trash cans, I think, takes a little bit less time, but I think we need to come up with some type of decisions um, soon. So let me go to the, um, let me go. Question. Yeah, sure. Do we, are, are we responsible, mm, is, is it um, in prioritized that we have to spend this money by the end of the fiscal year? No, June, so there's no timeline for spending the money. Which okay. is good, um, but the sooner we do it, right? I got the it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, sure. You're welcome. All right. So I'm just gonna go quickly. Um, I on my past email, I think I did say that you know we try to attend these meetings because again, this is your committee. Um, you guys have committed to this time. Um, it's it's always good to get as many attendants as possible and just be part of the decision making process. Um, if we can decide later on if changing the day or changing the time might accommodate better, um, you know, some of the members, we can come up with those type of decision. Uh, but I just think that it's important to get as many attendants as possible. So, um, Chile Supik, I know she was here. I'm not sure if she's still here or not. If you are here, as I pronounce your name, you can un unmute and say something. Okay, Devon Parks. India artist, Albert Barnes, Stephanie Hopman, Gloria Cooper Blue, Sheila Lewis, Michelle. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Aaron Plymouth. And um everybody, Aaron has Joan is our Joan is our newest member, um, but he wasn't able to be here today. Do you have any um? Do you have any updates, Carla? No, you are you are muted. Oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to be a good girl. Um, I'm surprised he's not here, so I haven't heard from him. You, was there supposed to be a conflict or something, or you don't know? He didn't say anything. Okay, I'll I'm, okay. I'll text and find out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Um, and Carla. <laughs> Hi. All right. Who else we have today? Bernard Jones. Hello. Hi, Bernard. 
Um, I cannot see you, but you're here. I can hear you. Kellen Thomas. Grace Snowden. Marilyn Evans. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Jamelia Blount. Daniel Smith. Linda Dorsey Walker. And Sharon Hendricks. Hey, everyone. Hey, okay. So um, we have a guest today um, to talk to us about the county um, tree programs. Uh, most of you um, did, you know, mention last time that you didn't want to use the two hundred fifty thousand dollars towards trees, um, and that we should come up with some type of grants to increase the canopy. So, I have Kerry here tonight um, to talk to us about any tree programs and any available tree grants. Kerry. Hi, um, so I, I'm Carrie Oberholzer. I work with um, the Department of Environmental Protection and Sustainability in the Forest Management section, and we oversee the county's um, planting requirements under um, the Chesapeake Bay TMDL program, um, the Forest Conservation Act, and then the um, county's tree canopy goals. And the tree canopy goals um, in 2013, they were set, and it was um, an overall goal of 50% um, countywide, and then 50% for each of the three reservoir um, watersheds, and then 40% for all of the census designated places. So 40% in our urban areas. Um, and we primarily meet the majority of our goals with large um, reforestation uh, plantings, which is um, about 200 trees per acre. Um, that's more in rural areas, and that's really to meet our TMDL and forest conservation goals. Um, for the tree canopy goals, um, we have an urban tree planting program um, that I think um, may fit in some um, and that you might be interested in. Now it is for um, residential properties or county parks, um, county open space. We don't typically plant um, commercial or um, in medians of busy streets, but we have done projects um, in Villanova um, where we, um, worked with the community group there um, and provided them a letter and they reached out to their neighbors and um, our minimum is 15 people. And we planted um, large canopy trees um, either in the front yard or in the grassy strip between the curb and sidewalk if they qualified. Um, so that is an opportunity at this time. We really do rely on groups to do the outreach. We um, are in the near ish future expanding our um, program and we will have um, a, a entire section dedicated to urban trees. So at that point, we might be able to do a little more of the outreach um, and that will will start um, ex expanding the program in July. And then, um, so typically for those programs, we um, work with a community association. Like I said, we need 15 um, people to sign up for a tree. They are planted by our contractors and they're one and a half to two inch diameter at breast height. Um, they're usually five to six feet tall. Uh, we plant native trees um, and canopy trees. So eventually they will um, get fairly large. And then um, as far as grants, um, and I can send um, information out so that you have know exactly where to look. Um, but 
one of the best places is the Chesapeake Bay um, Trust. They periodically come out with grants and they do, now the deadline just closed for this year, but they do have um, an urban tree grant that um, they will be doing every year for the next 10 years. Um, they have a goal, well, the state has a goal of planting 5 million trees by um, 2030 and 500,000 of those trees will be um, designated for um, urban areas. So um, they will be each year um, opening that grant cycle up. They also have other um, grants that come out that you could apply for. Um, also, another place is uh, local watershed groups like Blue Water Baltimore. Um, they receive a grant from the county and they do work with neighborhoods to get trees planted um, on, in them. So, are there any questions? Are there any questions from, um, well, yeah. let's start with the, the tree programs first. Yeah, I have one question. Hello? Hello. Yes. Um, my name is Devon and I understand you're, you know, trying to plant the trees, but in order to plant some trees, we have to take away some old trees. So do you do that part? So we, um, my department does not, um, take down trees. Um, if they are trees that are dying in the grassy strip, um, between the sidewalk and curb, um, many times they will fall under, uh, public works, uh, public works holds the, um, county's roadside, uh, tree permit with the state. And so um, they are um, tasked with taking them down if, um, but no, we typically do not take down trees. Okay, thanks. Any other question for Kerry? I have a comment. Sure. Um, my husband and I have been landscapers for many, many years, and we have watched a lot of streetscape plans come and go. And in 85% of the streetscape plans, the trees are no longer in existence. And part of the reason for that is that the money is always laid out to buy the trees and to pay to have them installed, but they never ever supply money for a maintenance program to take care of those trees. And Got because, it. oh, sorry. And sorry. because of that, uh, every, uh, I mean, every time I see uh, trees going in, uh, I actually am upset for them because it, within two or three years, they're gone, they're dead. So what is in the plan to help maintain these young trees uh, to make sure that once we lay out this amount of money, that it will be uh, a thriving investment? So... Anything that's planted by my department, um, we the we have the first year of maintenance is built into our contracts, and they come with a hundred percent survival guarantee. After that, we do have a long term maintenance contract um, because we credit the trees towards the um, county's Chesapeake Bay um, remediation efforts. We do have an obligation um, to protect them long term because we're getting credit for them. And th there's actually a requirement to do in um, inspections and um, things like that. So we do have a long term maintenance contract. Now, um, if it's planted under another program or you get grant funds for it, I do. Um, really stress that you do try to put maintenance funds into that grant because you're exactly right. That is a very big problem that um, people plant and walk away. Mm -hmm. um, and more and more, um, the 
let's say tree planting community is has been working with the grant writers to try to make sure that they include that they allow people to include money for maintenance but that is something you definitely want to put in any grants you write and like i said anything that would be planted by my department um we do have that initial year because that initial year is very important for watering for large landscape style trees and then we continue to monitor it and we do have a long-term maintenance contract that we can use if we need to okay the question for um carrie yes how much are the grants um so it really depends um usually um the urban tree grant it depends on how many trees you're going to get planted but that one you can request um and i'm sorry and i'll send this grant out to everybody um it depends how many trees you're requesting but you can go up to a million dollars but that's more for countywide programs um and i think it was between like 2000 and 6000 trees but so it depends on the individual grants so i would like to clarify with everybody that the existing tree program that is in the county is only for residential areas residential so, or if county parks if they're in the area if you wanted us to look at them um and things like that so the liberty road corridor would not be eligible for any of that grant but then you talked about the grant to the chesapeake bay trust trust is that yeah. commercial can we apply for that is that eligible so i believe it is um that's a miss by the trust and it's um, coming from the state um, the important things are you would have to have the landowner's permission so you would need a letter of permission um, before you apply for the grant um, and but they're really looking to get urban trees um, so I do I think that is something they would consider yes okay and then um, in the call, we have different community associations. I know you talked about having a minimum group of 15 people to come up with the application. What yeah. is the timeline and how, um, you know, so, how competitive is this? Okay, so this, so that would be the residential properties. Right. What we need the 15. So what you would want to do is um, reach out to my section, so myself, um, and you would just when we move forward with a project um we plant in the spring and the fall so typically we would need to have 15 people signed up um let's say by september 1st for a fall planting and march 1st for a spring planting okay and then um i believe you have priority areas within the county of where you will be planting so that is so that's a separate program um, that I didn't mention because it's not really something you can um, sign up for. Um, we have a third um, third program where we're really targeting um, areas that have low canopies, and um, so we actually they they came up with. Um, a metric to determine which census blocks we're looking at. We are currently doing um, Northwest Crossing, which is um, off of Liberty Road. Um, I believe that's in the corridor um, because we will we we can do apartment complexes around um, apartment complexes. We're just not really set up to do commercial in the islands in the um parking lots and things like that but we can do um apartment complexes or front yards um but for our urban tree planting um we do that one as long as we have community buy-in and that the community is doing um 
majority of the outreach. Like we'll help we'll supply letters um, and we'll answer questions and anything like that. But um, as long as we have someone from the community really doing the outreach and getting people to sign up, we can move forward with a project. Okay, that's good. And that's the one that the county will be giving them at least one year of maintenance and yes. potential long-term maintenance. Yes. Okay. Well, um, I think it's it's interesting. If you get me the information, I yes, can push, I will. It, um, yeah, push it to everybody. Maybe something of interest um, for the residential. All right, and then for the um for the grants, um, those uh you said that it's already we already missed the deadline with for this the, year for this year yeah and then so we have to wait another year before we can, you know, put anything in in in, you know, apply for the for the CRD. Yes, but I would I would stress that you would want to start early determining where you want to plant trees, making sure you have um, landowner permission um, and all of um, that kind of stuff um, lined out because um, that's all stuff they're going to want to know for the grant. And then um, I'm sure you know that Liberty Road is a state road and I'm sure maybe perhaps there will be some type of state approval needed or, or review, I'm not sure. But maybe something that we need to, you know, identify or like um, put in the application so they know. Yes, yes. Okay. And that might be, you may want to um, go, uh, ha have a plan and submit it to um, the state prior to going um, for the money. Get okay. Their, yeah, and get a, a letter of support from them. So I see Michelle has her hand raised. Would you like to ask a question, Michelle? Yes, um, I just wondered about, uh, thank you for the information about the trees. What about any kind of um, shrubs or anything other than trees? So um, we do not plant any shrubs. Um, I'm not, I'm not aware of any departments that do. Um, we're really, um, focused on tree planting. Okay, so like roadside is um, flowering shrubs, roses, azaleas, or something else that might just beautify right along a walkway. I'm trying. I'm trying to think if I. I haven't seen any grants um, that are just for shrubs um it might be something if it's a another type of project they might put funds in for that um like if they're doing stormwater retrofit or something but um incentives for business owners yeah um i'm not aware of any so so it may not be to you know what Kerry is doing right now but i always um remind everybody that we are in a sustainable community boundary and for that you have access to um you know grants um from the state and as part of your um grant request you can ask for beautification money which is going to be you know landscaping and also maintenance so that is a way of you know a route that we can take in order to do some type of beautification on liberty road but still we are always going to need um SHA approval or blessing before we do anything on Liberty Road. How long does it usually take them to respond? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, it is very competitive. Um, it's for the whole state of Maryland. Um, and they do it. Um, it takes about usually the application is open around May, um, depending on you know what's going on with the um COVID last year. It was later um, this year. I don't know when it's going to be open. Um, it, 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 they take into consideration, um, you know, what type of um, organization you are. You have to be nonprofit 501C or you have to be, um, you know, the local government to apply for the grant. And also when you do that, they need to, um, you know, they check how, um, you know how how capable you know the the capacity building of the organization in in order to 
apply, in order to maintain, in order to implement. So, and they do that for the whole state of Maryland. I know Liberty Road has never applied for this grant. Um, and this is the reason why we convene actually this meeting, this committee, in order to see how we can um, take advantage of those um, resources out there. Other communities are doing it. I'm not sure if you know of Towson, they have, you know, the nice flowers hanging. Um, they have, you know, all the beautification she's getting from that community legacy money. And it's just applying and just, you know, waiting and, and hoping for the best that we get the money. So I think it's something that I'm really pushing for this committee to do this year. Um, we can identify some of the nonprofit that are eligible for applying for the, you know, for the whole corridor, for the whole sustainable area and see how we do this. Are some of the light posts we're looking at the kind that can hold uh, planters? Well, we haven't really identified any type of um, style for the light poles, but if that's the route we want to take, um, we, we, we can do that. I mean, we can do maybe the light pole now and then work on getting some money to hang flowers in the in the future. At least the light pole will already be there and, and be ready to take those those flowers. So it's something to consider. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Any other question for Kerry? Yeah, sure, Carla. Sorry about that. My question was more about your comment about the um <clears throat> The flowers are, are and even the trees, because for those that um, you need a nonprofit, um, I don't know if this is for you or for Carrie. Could two nonprofits go in together? Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, um, you know, it just you know you're putting your chances higher. Right. Um, okay. If one doesn't get it, at least the other one can. Um... No, I meant to work to to put it in as because let's say you need two because of the number of people or whatever or. By Liberty Road, you have several nonprofits that either intersect or, you know, um, or abut one another that they could go in together and and be able to put in for the grant. That's a good question. I have to um, check on that because in the past, with the application, there is one name listed on the application, and that name is responsible for getting the money and managing the money. But I can, I can find out for you because it's a great question. We could still probably have one as the lead and then the other ones come up underneath as supporting. That's effort. what I would, that, that's my guess is mm -hmm. what you could do. Um, okay. A lot of grants are um, structured like that, but you just have to check each specific one. But um, usually you can have partners. Okay. Okay. And then I'll, um, once I get a final confirmation on that, I'll, I'll email everybody. But I think it's a great question because that actually increased our chances um, in terms of capacity. Yeah, it spreads the workload too. Oh yeah, and that too. <laughs> All right, I'm checking to see if anybody else have any questions before we let Carla go. You mean Carrie, not me. <laughs> before we let Carrie go. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Well, Kerry, thank you so much for the You're info. Um, anything you know what we are looking for? Um, yes. If you in the future get into, you know, get any type of opportunities, please let me know and I'll share with the um with the committee. Yes, yeah, so and I'll provide some of um the information that we talked about today, my contact information so that if any community is um interested in our urban um tree program, you know who to contact. That's great. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Bye. All right, so last time we had SHA, we had MTA, we had property management, we had solid waste management. Um, everybody was here just to give us some information on how we should proceed with the project that we are um, you know, spending money on. So I just wanted to remind everybody that for the um proposed streetscape um, that we are trying to come up to fund with the $250,000 that we have, we are trying to get those shovel ready projects. So maintenance projects, nothing that require engineering, nothing that require design, replacing existing trash cans, replacing benches, replacing lighting, 
landscaping and banners and also trees. So these are the streetscape project that we agree on. And I think I want everybody to, you know, to, to, to know this because I had received all the emails asking, can we fund the money with, you know, some really gigantic projects <laughs> that will take more, more time and more money to fund anyway. So these are the, the, the project that we are going to stick with. Is everybody agree? Does everybody agree with this? All right. So having said that, I just want to um, give you some more information or actually just remind everybody about the information we got last time. Um, we know that on Liberty Road, the existing trash cans been there for what, over 20 years, I heard. Um, they are, you know, inadequate. They are, they are really tiny. Um, so the classic trash receptacle are on this picture right here. So they hold about 30 gallons um, and they're going to be steel. Um, and then there's no door hanging, you know, so that the trash will come out. So you actually have to, um, you know, put the trash inside and there's nothing that's going to get the trash out. And then for the metal bench that we are thinking, um, it's going to look a little bit similar to what's on this picture. It can be six foot or it can be eight foot with a divider. So with the information that we got last time, we know that we can only do replacement. Um, we cannot come up with new locations because it's not um, included in the, in the budget. And then we cannot come with like new design because it's going to need SHA approval and it's going to take a longer period of time and it's going to be and it's more complicated. And then we also uh, found out that trash cans uh, cost about $1,000 and then the benches cost about $2,000 and the installation is not included into those. So I have asked everybody to come up with um, locations and also to come up with the types of project, the streetscape furniture um, that they would like to, to, to pursue. So I didn't receive a lot of, um, a lot of, um, feedback on this, but with the few ones that I received, um, I think two of the members wanted to get the trash replaced at Liberty Road and Essex Road. And on this picture, you can see how tiny these trash cans are. So they would like to actually replace this location with new trash cans. Another one that I received was replacing the trash can on in front of the Home Depot, right here on Brand Book. And um, it's, you can see it on the picture here. I received all the ideas um, that I didn't want to lose. So I just kept it right here. We can, you know, leave it on the parking lot and, 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 and just focus on what this money is for. And then later on, as we get, you know, more funding, we can think about these ideas, but I didn't want to lose them and I wanted to, you know, let the, the the committee members that sent it to me that you know I got them. I'm not I'm not ignoring them. And then um, the work that we did in house, I think, is going to help here because I haven't received a lot of feedback on where the locations of these trash cans should be. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to um, um, use this data that I had collected maybe two years ago um, to, to spend the money. Um, yes, yes, Carla. You are muted. Okay, can we, um, can you just give us maybe another week or two only because the weather was crazy, you know, between it being cold and everything and two weeks. So. <laughs> you know, I, I, I asked you the other day and it was, and I didn't go anywhere yesterday. It was too doggone cold. So maybe till, because it is going to be in the sixties this week, give us through the weekend and get it to you by Monday, possibly. And I asked that because based on the conversation where I am, there's not going to be any replacements. More of the replacements are further down Liberty and I need to, to get in my car and take a drive because that's not close to me. So if you would allow 
at least to the end of the week. I'd appreciate it. And, and I can get back with you on, you know, on something like that. I see Shirley yeah. talking, but she's muted. I don't know what she's saying over me, but anyway, <laughs> so no, I mean, that's I, I my think request. It's fair. I think okay, it's fair. In the beginning of the meeting, I did say that we only had like what two weeks, not even um, to come up with this exercise. And, you know, I just want to, you know, put put something in because we know the post is going to take a long time. But right. I think we um, I think it's fair. But OK, fair. I appreciate okay, it. I want to hear from I'll, others. I'll get, I'll get my homework done. I promise. <laughs> I want to hear from others. I, I see Michelle. I see um who else? Al um, Barnes. Yes. yes. I see Michelle. Uh, I see everybody's hands up. <laughs> I think Michelle was first. Okay. No, I was Thank just I being a gentleman. something about the the area between Milford and Rolling, on on Liberty. Milford and Rolling, and I think I I mean it's in here. Um. Mm, oops. I think I did receive between rolling, you said? Between on Liberty between Milford and Rolling Roads. And was that you talking about additional trash collection? It, it, well, like there's ne there's never there don't seem to be enough cans. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, and then so that means we have to come up with new installations. And we know that new installation is not Bigger? in the budget for trash collection. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I I would say let's start with just replacing everything on Liberty Road. And then if we have money left, maybe by that time, there will be money in, in the budget for collection for new, um, for new uh, location. And what we could do is as you do your homework, let's also um, identify those that need additional trash can. And then we can take that list back to the county executive and say, hey, not only will we need new trash can, but we will need you to add budget in the um, money in the budget for, for trash uh, pickup. I think, I, I, I don't know what you guys think. Okay. You are muted. The, the Sorry, question is, to if say. we were to replace all the ones that needed replacing, would we run? That's the question. Would we run out of money, based on your chart on the map? I don't know. We have okay. to come up with that. Give it to um, property management for cost estimate, um, and then we go from there. Okay. And then um, what I'll do is count the ones that said replacing, and if we did. We just replaced every trash can and we find out that there's 250 of them. Well, there's your 250,000 right there, you know, without, ex, you know, installation. But I don't think there's 250 trash cans that right. need replacing. No, there's not. There's um, 43 trash cans. How many? 43. 43? Existing? Of ex yeah. If it's 43, that's 43,000. Minus installation. Right. Installation. And so I, if I, I actually looked at them, if you replace everything, we would still be on the budget as far as trash cans and benches. But to me, they're all not in bad shape. Well, no, we, right, we, we're not replacing all of them, just like those old ones that they, we saw the pictures of, because there are some good ones out there. Yeah. And that was for the purpose, I think, of that that cage part they were talking about to keep the stuff from falling over. Mm -hmm. So the, there's some the those are the one the, those are the good ones. Yeah, yeah. I, I I thought that at the most you have to replace half the trash cans and half the benches. I mean, all of them haven't been there for twenty years. Right. From what I what from what I observed, and I didn't look at each and every one of them. But some of them were in good shape. The, the 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 list that was given, I think, had conditions on them, where somebody has already looked at some of them and said some of these need to be replaced. But I wouldn't think it would be all of them. And if you had to do half of them, it, it would not would would take 
56,000 plus insulation to do half. Well, I think that's it is one. The benches, the benches and, and the trash cans. If you replace half of them, that would only be 56,000 using the numbers we had plus insulation. And I think did somebody, I think somebody raised that, that we wanted to have a uniform look throughout the whole um, corridor. So if we already have those that have been replaced, you know, not a long time ago, then maybe we don't have to spend money replacing them again. Um, but it's just going to take time. I would say, let's, let me give you until two weeks um, to get me a list of locations. And I know you guys don't want to see my data that I collected, or I will have to go with that. Um, so, so two weeks and two weeks will be for the entire corridor, not only, you know, renders, you know, the, the, that middle portion, but everywhere. Would that work? Kaylin, I was just wondering if they're the ones that don't get replaced, if maybe they could be painted or something that way they are uniform with the new ones. That's a good idea. Um, I know there's some, um, I wouldn't say permits required, but I think there is a type of paint that you have to use. It needs to be sealed um, and those, all those type of things. I can get you the details, uh, but I think it's a good question. Uh, it's a good um, idea just to make okay. sure that, you know, if we want them all to look black, um, then we can at least have that uniformity. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, I think I see Sharon, do you have your hand raised? I do. So here's my question, because I'm listening to all the different dialogues. So at least on the part of Liberty Road that I travel, you know, from Beltway to the hospital, we have, for the most part, the new trash can, newer trash cans, but they're the ones that they were explaining have the hinge that opens, so they're often left open and things like that. So are we taking into consideration replacing those um, or at least they'll look like the new ones. They just still have the hinge and then they also have these blue signs on them. Are we looking at replacing everything when you count 43? Does that include just green ones or does that include even the ones that look like the ones on the screen but have the hinge door, if that makes sense? The 43 is the total number of cans. That includes the old cans, the, the new okay. uh, ornamental cans, as well as the ornamental cans that have the door on. Okay. And I think this because is something it, that you guys are going to have to decide on. What is your priority? Do you want to just, you know, make sure you have all the same style? Um, does it matter to you? Um, I think those are like decisions that you, you're going to have to come up with. Yes, we should. Have okay, everything. we should have everything in uniform. I would think so. And then when you talk about painting, I think there could still be that's that's a lot of, I'll say manpower, man hours to, to really do that. So is it easier just to replace if there's only 43 to make it look nice, make it all uniform? I, I know that's what we have to decide, but. Um, once you deviate from anything, I think it makes it more complicated. Right. I'm still confused. If we replaced everything, we would only be talking about $112,000 plus insulation. So uh, why are we we're saying that we can only uh, think about re re uh, replacements? Uh, well, because, um... When there is an existing trash can, there is also budget to to collect that trash. So if that's we add, true. that's not what he's asking though. He's, he's not, saying, not, yeah, he's saying if there's what forty three or fifty six, however many that on your map that have to be replaced, why can't we just replace them all and not have to quote pick? Just say all the ones that need replacing, replace them. I'm fine with that too. I'm actually saying, why, why, why do we have a budget problem if right. <laughs> the total trash cans and the, uh, if we break the total benches, that amount is $112,000 plus insulation, which is not a big 
number, why do we have a budget problem? Why are we saying we can only limit what we're doing? As it relates to benches and trash cans. Well, we right. only spent half the money, about right. half the money. So why do we have a budget problem already? Where we got to limit what we're doing. I don't think we have a budget problem. I think we're just trying to get more with the money that we have. Um, instead of just getting the trash and the benches, I think some of you are already talking about lighting poles that you can hang flowers. Um, you know, getting getting other types of um, um, other types of projects, such as what else did you guys talk about? Well, we we had talked about the lining and the flowers, but the the other the question we know we can't do right now is adding trash cans because we that adds money to the budget for pickup that we that's not included. So we mm -hmm. got that from last mm -hmm. week from the last meeting. But I agree with Mr. Barnes. If we were to send your map over of everything that has to be replaced for trash cans and benches and ask, what was it, DPWT, what is that going to cost? Get it back to us, and then we know what we have left out of the two fifty that we can spend towards lighting. I and think that's, oh, if I'm we, sorry. And, and um, that way we we don't need two weeks. I mean, we can do that and find out possibly in two weeks what do we have left to then go use that that extra to figure out about lighting. Yeah, but unfortunately, the data I collected was just for that middle part of Liberty Wood. It doesn't include. The east side, which is like the Villa Nova and the Lockern area, and it doesn't include anything past Greens Lane. So the data that I have is only from Greens Lane to 695. Okay. Well, we so, know the total number is 43 as far as trash cans. So what we that means that we need to concentrate on Green Lane up and 695 down. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we can do that for, um, you know, the sake of time consuming. Right. Since I already have the data in the middle. Right. There you, okay. So for 695 to what going towards the city? What is that? I would say 695 to the, um, to the, to the, to the city line. County to oh, the county right. line. What's that? Mr. Barnes. Northern Parkway. Thank you. Thanks. And then, Greens, and then Greens Lane to, um, what would you say, Lions Mills? Okay. Yeah, what I'm, um, what I could find out is that because they already have that budgeted, budgeted, maybe they should also have the locations for collection. So if they have the location for collection, maybe we can use whatever data they're using and say everything that is collected right now, we need trash can replacement. There you and then, go. Um, maybe you guys will not have to go out there and count trash cans. <laughs> <laughs> I can find out and let you know if that's even possible. Gene, let me ask a question. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. You no, know, this is this is going to sound dumb, but um, if we replace all these trash cans and some of them are not going to be that bad off, you you're not talking about anything down past, uh, you know, like um, Villanova and, and, and to the beltway, uh, to the city line, uh, why can't we recycle some of these trash cans to people in those areas that we're, that we're going to be replacing? We'll get new ones. We can put the old ones in places where They're they are needed. Old. If not all of them are going to be that old, and those people have nothing down there. You mean in the city, give it, give it away to the city? I mean, past. It's not the city, but, but yes, past where we're talking, the, the, the you know, down near Villanova and, and Woodmore. Woodmore and those areas who, That's who, who have none. <clears throat> wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be better to recycle some of these that aren't in terrible, terrible shape? And give well, them something are, that they don't have at all. If they are on Liberty or they are part of this exercise, and I think they should also get new ones. If you're talking about the area between, you know, the Villanova area or like going all the way to Northern Parkway, still yes. in the county, but it's on Liberty Road. 
I think they should they should get new ones. Well, I'd like to see them get new ones too, but they're not in the budget. <laughs> well, we, yeah, only, we can't add any. That's what that's been the conversation. We can't add any trash cans because it won't be collected. There's no money in the budget to add to the collection of that trash. That's the issue. Oh, that's a different budget cycle. They don't have cans down there. Cause but I, 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 trash. That's terrible. Say that again, whoever that was. Say what, what money me? For, for collection of new trash cans. I think you are muted if you're trying to say something, Marilyn. And and I, I think I'm trying not to choke on, on my words because I drove down Liberty Road and where there were trash cans, People were literally, there was a young lady, literally standing in the trash waiting for the bus. So to say there's nothing in the budget to collect the trash, and that's why we can't get trash cans in locations that need trash cans, but they can't have trash cans because no one's picking up the trash, I, that breaks my heart. I'm, I'm at, at least I'm talking about this budget right now that has been already approved a year ago. There is a new budget coming up, and there is a town hall meeting um, set up for what March 30th um, in two weeks. That is your chance and your opportunity to talk to the county executive and to the councilmen about any type of priorities that you would like to be included in the budget. And I think that is the time for everybody in the 4th district to go in sign in and 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 talk about any type of concerns, any type of issues going on so that we can be included in right. the budget. Other right. communities do it. They come up, they talk and they get listened. Community, I think it's time for Randall's town to come heavy and just talk about anything that is a priority for this area. And I think the more specific we are, like when um, Michelle was indicating there's no trash, we need more trash cans between Rolling and Milford Mills, and let's be specific to give them that information at the town hall. Th th that's why I'm, we're trying, per DPWT in our last meeting, in the current budget, it's only, they only have the, the contracts to, for their collection pe con companies is just for what's out there today. So they can only collect what's out, we're replacing what's there today. Then going into fiscal year 2023 for July, that's when we wanna add trash cans so that DPWD can add the trash cans and add the money to the contracts of those collectors to say, now it's not just 20, now you gotta collect, 50, collect from 50 cans, but that's, FY23. And then, and then we will pray that they collect from the 50 as well. Absolutely. But right now, from what I've been seeing, they're not collecting anything. So what the gentleman said, and I can look his name, and I know. Um, Scott um, Well, Yeah, he, he actually gave us his name and number at the last meeting. He said, if it's not collected, you can call me, and I'll make sure that it gets done. Uh, then, because So he did say that to us. And then he said that it's getting collected every Tuesday, if I remember. Right. Um, yes. On on Liberty Road. So at least we get collection once a week. I'm going to so, put it in the chat. I'm going to put his name and number in the chat so you can have it. Because he said we could call him. And so if you want to um, call or email or whatever and um, tell him you're a part of this committee, that might give it some priority as well. And I think, Carla, you said something very important when you guys talk about your issues in front of the county executive. I think you need to also talk about you talking about future additions. I mean, you know, additions, not talking about the existing right now because he gave us money for what's existing to replace them. I think he needs to find to know that we're talking about we want to add more trash cans and we need budget uh, money in the budget for collection. Um, Miss Shule, do you have your hands raised or you? That was from last time. You are muted. So I 
um, I was wondering about the STEAM Center. When is that supposed to come online? Like, do we, if we're talking about future budgets, is that something? Well, the, that... <laughs> the STEAM Center, I'm not sure about the timeline. Um, I know they were into, you know, design phase. Um, I'm, I'm not too sure about that, but that's something that you can bring up at the um, town hall meeting. You can also, I can try to get some information about that if you want, or you also have your community coordinator from the um, Office of Community Engagement. His name is Kirk Mitchell. Um, who and you his can meeting contact. is this Thursday, Michelle. Do you have that? No, I, I guess I'm thinking I want to know more about it. And then, of course, if you're creating a place, another place for people to gather, then you need to plan for what goes around that as well, right? If they're building well, it this year, does it need to go in the budget this year? Well, no, that's, I can tell you, it's not going to happen anytime soon. It happened to be kind of intro, um, integral in that whole piece. They're still doing design and um, um, they're doing like just soil testing and all of that. One of the big pieces that came out of some of those meetings with the community was, does it have, does the interest have to be from Greens Lane? So they're looking at taking the entrance, not from Greens Lane, but from the other side, which is where the um, YMCA and the Randallstown Community Center is. So th there's there's a whole lot of design and planning that has yet to start. So it's not coming. It's not going to be on board, probably okay. for two years. But, so, yeah. but his meeting is this weekend, this I'm Thursday. Sorry? You said the meeting is this Thursday. It's thir um Yeah, Kurt, if. Put you if you want to put your, um, because I wanted to talk to you about some other stuff before. I'll um, put your email if you want to in the chat to me, and I will forward the the meeting, and then Kurt can add you. You know, going forward, Kurt Mitchell is our is our per person. Or wait a minute, hold on. Instead of doing I'll that, just, I'm putting my information in the chat. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can come up with, find his um email. Because he just sent it to me yesterday, and I told him tentatively for Thursdays. And then, um, so that specific project, the STEAM Center is being handled by Rec and Park. Um, that's their right. baby. Um, Kirk is the community liaison. Um, for, our, for four. For four. So he does do some um, monthly meetings. And yeah, I believe it's on Thursday, Gane. I remember seeing an email. I think okay. Thursday evening, yeah. I, it is. I'm I'm just I'm posting his contact information in the chat. If anybody if everybody can see it. If not, I'll put it. I mean, I'm sorry, in question and answer. I'll put it in chat too. Thank you, Carla. Yep. All right. Um, so I think we need to um we need to keep keep going here. Yep. What about so okay, so we did say we want to replace everything. We um doesn't matter. When was it last updated? I mean, replaced um, for uniformity. And then I'm going to reach out to Scott to see if they already have the locations because they do have a schedule. Um, and then we can just grab that, you know, database if it's existing. If not, I will let you know in advance so that you okay. can focus your exercise on just the part of Greens Lane um, into whatever, <laughs> whatever far, how far you want to go, um, and uh, 695 to Northern Parkway. All right, so that is the ben that is the trash cans. Should we move on to the benches? Can we do this? I think, didn't, can't we do the same for the benches? Because per Albert, he did both. Or am I wrong, Albert? Albert, how many benches do we have? We have uh, 34. 34? Yes. And then are all 34 in good shape, bad shape? What's up? They're they're in various conditions. Um there's a I saw maybe three or four that need replaced. And in addition to the 34, there's like maybe four um bus shelters that all are also have the bench. So with the bus shelters we can us. touch because that's SHA. So if it no, happens, no, yeah, but I'm, I'm saying as far as seating, why right, do you it, have the 34 benches, but you have seating in the bus shelters? Right. So I'm not sure if you were here last meeting, but if there is a shelter in place, 
right. SHA is handling that bench inside the shelter. So we cannot, the county has no preview over that. I'm, I'm only mentioning that to say the available seating. What pe what what is available for people to use? Okay. Oh, okay. the total count. Okay. Okay. So with the benches, it might be we cannot go to because again, I only have data for that middle section, and there okay. is no. I don't think there is a there is any type of database in the county that's being used for that, and I think maybe we need to focus our efforts on maybe just counting the benches and finding identifying locations. Um, and then for the trash, I'll, I'll handle the trash. What about you guys focus on the benches? Maybe. Okay. And for the new 1, because there's no. Issue with having money in the budget, I think with new benches. We're only going to need to come up with a plan and get approval from SHA. So, I guess with the benches, if you identify location that are missing. We should be able to put that in the plan and send it to um, SHA for approval. Any question with trash can and benches? I'm, I'm confused. The, the list you sent us that um, had had all kinds of little notes about the trash cans and benches. Right, and that is only from Greens Lane to 695 that I was able oh. to collect data. Okay. So I'm saying that maybe for that section of Liberty Road that you guys don't have to check it out, but then Greens Lane to Lions Mill Road or 695 to Northern Parkway, we still need data. All right, so so that's benches, that's trash cans, and I think light poles. Um, I do have some data for street lighting, um, the ones that are damaged or missing. Again, for just that portion of Liberty Hood. I'm not sure if you guys want to come up with a new style um, so that you can hang flowers. Is that something that you guys want to discuss? It wouldn't be bad, but we just need to know what it's going to cost per. And or what the styles we can you give us um, samples of what the styles look like. Okay, or send okay. yeah, send them to us and we can look at them. Please well, and also who's going to take care of them. That's going to be, we're going to have to have funding. To manage, I mean, not manage, but maintenance. So, we're going to have to put money aside for that. Either that or have so we, volunteers to just come in, water the. That's where the grant money comes in, though, right? Yeah, that's the grant money because you can't. I mean, you have to have a truck. You have to have a truck. That's right. With a with a long extension hose. That's not a volunteer process. That's okay. a hire a contractor. <laughs> yeah. So, so and I think talking. that's that's why I was saying maybe we phase out this project. Um, right. With phase one, we just get the light poles. Um, and then when we get money for plantings and maintenance, then we do that phase. So let me ask this then, based on since you mentioned Towson, can if, if we can possibly look to see what Towson has, and I kind of have an idea of the type of lighting that they have, but then is it possible to either speak to that organization that t t that does their flowers and find out what they do and how they work, and then we can because. We're not in competition with them because we're all the way on the other side and then quote copy and paste. Oh, absolutely. Um, her name is Nancy Hafford. She's very pleasant. She's very nice and she's always ready to share information. So, um, if that's something that whatever organization wants to take this, you know, the lead on the grant can, um, you know, set up a meeting with her and, and, and okay. get everything. She's, she'd be happy to do that. And then we can work with Baltimore County's, um, you know, the, it's, I forgot what it, but it's the center that deals with flowers and plants and all of that stuff and work with them and possibly get some free or very low cost type 
um, well maintenance, you know, flowers and stuff like that, or greenery, you know. Okay. Okay. The the, the um the light poles. I'm 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 I believe most of the Libby Road has the um, colonial ornamental poles. So wouldn't we be talking just talking about adding a bracket? That wouldn't be a bad idea if we could do that. Okay. Is that a question we have to ask DPW? Road that don't have those lights though. Because I live down I'm, I'm, I'm saying most most of it has those lights, I believe. There's a long stretch that doesn't have the lights. And then that's the ones we'll replace. Okay. I mean, okay. Um, yeah, I'm talking about those old colonial ones. Yeah. Well, they're new, they're new colonial. <laughs> they don't all have to hold flowers. That's a lot. I mean, that's an expensive, it, it can be strategic. Yeah. I right. think if we did it around that, that, that central business area, like the, that, that middle corridor, because up my area, we don't need them, you know, um, but where the, all the, the businesses are to, to beautify it, I think would be a good idea. And I would say also as another option, you don't have to have flowers. You can have, you know, those district banners or neighborhood banners, you know, identifying. That would be awesome. The yeah, banner. identifying the, the different communities. I think that 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 would be neat too. I love I yeah. love that. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think so you could add, make it an art project. Project. So you have things that are unique to communities that are designed by artists who live in Baltimore County. Have yeah, that's great, so Michelle. That means you're taking the lead on that project, right? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, I, this is Kaylin again. I do, uh, uh, notice that we don't have anything at Northern Parkway saying welcome to the Liberty Road communities or anything like that, which would be nice. Some type so that, of something there. So that would be a community association signage, which the community association should be handling that. Um, so what what community association is 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 in that location? There are several. There's the yeah. Lockburn community, the Woodmore community, uh, the Forest Garden community. Um, uh, but aren't you just talking about a welcome to Baltimore County sign? Like Carroll County, when you go across the reservoir, has a well, you know, welcome to. Carroll County, welcome to Baltimore County. Does it well, have to be a, I, a Baltimore County? Yes, it could say Baltimore County, but I just think that if we're talking about Liberty Road kind of coming together and having this new look and everything, it'd be great to say Liberty Road communities. Because that way mm -hmm. you include all the communities that are uh, along Liberty Road. Right. I'm just saying, couldn't that so you're you're talking about something that says Liberty Road communities, but it doesn't have to necessarily identify each community association. That, right. Is that what right. you're in mind? Maybe too many to to name. So right. If so you... I'm saying that could be a county sign, couldn't it? Doesn't I mean it's not it's not badged with each community association. It's just a welcome right. to Baltimore County communities sign. In other words, when the county pay for Something like that that just says, "Hey, you've changed jurisdictions now. You're in the county." For well, that, yeah, but I think what um, Kaylin is talking about is just identifying the different communities, and as you get in from the city, that first community that you enter into is. Um, no, I'm not movement. saying to. I'm not saying to identify each community. I'm just saying to say, welcome to the Liberty Road communities, because there's way too many communities to list. So if we wanna say, welcome to Baltimore County, then under that, it could say, and the Liberty Road communities or something like that, because that it's giving us an identification. If we're talking about beautifying Liberty Road and we're trying to unify Liberty Road, then that's that gives us an identification. Kaylin, we've like always been identified as the Liberty Road corridor. That's what I was going to say. Okay, like so then, yeah, corridor, right. So then that would work, yeah. Yep. 
Yeah. That's let, me find, let me find out um, how is the county handling, you know, that because it's, you know, from city to county, will they take in, you know, take that in charge? Um, okay. And possibly maybe it's the state if, if, if it's on Liberty Road. There is one that says um, Randallstown, but I think I think that's it's on private property. I don't on uh, the one that's on the school. What is that? Randallstown Elementary, right there, Greens Lane. It was part of the UDAT. It was part of the UDAT. Okay. It was Let's you know that. it's part of that so the urban design team from two thousand five. Okay. So it was a partnership with the church, and it was a pocket park that was supposed to have a fountain. Mm -hmm. oh. Never got it. Okay, that's where they do the tree lighting. At Christmas. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. But the the but the one that goes from county to city, that one could if it's on Liberty Road, we might ask the state if they'll do that. Oh, okay. That's I'm just thinking, why not? Don't don't know. Won't get to your ass. True. Yeah. I'll, I'll ask the county and I'll ask the state. Okay. Thank you. We should get some. Thank you. I like the idea. <laughs> I do too. All right, so looks like we are we are on time. Um, I do want to talk about the next meetings, but before that, I just want to, you know, summarize what we talked about. Um, so trash can, everything is getting replaced. We're gonna get that database from property management. Benches, we have the data for the middle section. You are going to collect, identify Greens Lane up and um, 695 down. Um, we are going to, I'm going to talk about, not talk about, but find out some type of light pole style and send it to you that we can use um, when we replace the lighting. And then also find out about the bracket option to just add to the lighting poles that are good in condition. Um, what else did we talk about? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna review the the video again to make sure that I get everything. But I think that's what I can remember. Anything mm -hmm. that I miss? I think those were the the main that's points. The big ones. Okay. Uh, move then, the trees. Can you? Sharon said that I sent um her phone number. But that's what I, Scott gave us. So if we can get the right number for Scott, I, I'd appreciate it. Because he, he, sorry, Sharon, he put you up. <laughs> yes, I will email you Scott's number. I will the, get he gave us this long extension too. So yeah, and then can you email me the the um contact for M dot that we talked? Please. Sure, I'll you email a the contact for M dot. Mm -hmm. I will no, find I'm out. So, I'm sorry. MTA. MTA. You want MTA, not okay. M dot MTA. And yep. then I will find out what is the free way to get a signage um, you know, into Liberty Road, either to the county or the state. Um so they got all that, that money. They can afford to do that for us. And then what else? Money they don't know what they're going to do with. <laughs> and then for the tree, somebody mentioned the tree. Um, the tree, I will find, I will forward anything that I get from Kerry, but that is, that is only for residential areas. In order to apply for a grant, I think we missed this year. We have to wait another year. Um, so having said that, do you want to wait to increase the canopy? Um, you don't want to touch the two hundred fifty thousand dollars, right? Or do any type of beautification, even those planters um, that some of the members have mentioned last time. I just want to. What were can you make sure that you the guys... planters work? Because Michelle asked about shrubs, and we we can't get shrubs. So, what, the planters for the lights you're talking about? I was talking about those big planters that you can actually place. Um, on Liberty Road. Oh, so, but those again, that's also going to require maintenance. And I I'll know. be yeah. honest, I just feel like some people might steal them, steal the plants okay. out of the planters. Oh, oh, those are big and heavy. 
they're, they're real the plants? big. My, oh, they'll dig the plants out of the planters is what I'm saying. Yeah, but my concern is, well, if they take the plant, at least we know they'll, or assume they will take them and put them in their home and beautify that area. My fear is that that planter will become a trash receptacle because we're not picking up the trash. Right. Okay. Well, I just wanted but to. But I think um, it's a. I think it's a wonderful idea. I think it will add some pizzazz to that area. So, I, so is it possible? Because, like in the city, I've seen the big planters, and they're around um, retail businesses or restaurant establishments. So is it possible that if a, um, a an establishment was willing to have one around there and they were willing to kind of help maintain it, we'll put it in there? Is is that an option? I guess it's an option. We have to find out from the business owners if they are willing to do that. But I think it, it's an Yeah, for like, there, you know, you have the, um, what is it, the Liberty, um, Corridor Business Association, you know, some of them are right on Liberty Road and some of them are off of Liberty Road. But that, I mean, if if it could be done, then we could possibly, you know, do a presentation to that organization. I'm stretching. I know I'm stretching, but it's just a point of if we wanted to beautify, then we could get the businesses involved as well. Maybe okay. it's where they would adopt a planter. And yeah, how about that? Money to maintenance because they are not going to maintain flowers. The Liberty well, Road Business Association, their phone number is out of service. They're not in existence. So you'll have to figure out another way to talk to the businesses. Um, so there's no, I'm sorry. There's, there's no, buy, there's no LRBA operating at all now? There's, no. Yeah, no, Karen no, there is. With, um, Wind and Grind is the one that's in charge of it. She's the executive director. Yeah. It's very active. And she has an email address. It's very active, Kelly I, I, Carter. Yeah. I'll okay. ask her because, and Aaron, who was supposed to be a part of this call, he's a part of it too. Mm -hmm. So I'll talk to and Karen. And I am as well. Okay, right. So I'm yeah, part right. of it as well. So I'm happy to connect. Well, there you go, Sharon. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, maybe you can come up with some updates at next meeting about that. Whoever can yep. get in touch with um, Kelly. So Sharon, I have your phone number then, right? <laughs> Is the extension yours too? Okay, I I got you then. Thank you. I th I think we all That's saw mine. <laughs> can, it, can you send a, a contact list for yeah, our group? We were supposed to have that, right? We're we're we can't really see each other. Oh, I did at my last my previous email. I did send name and affiliation. I didn't send any contact information. Please, um, I'm, I'm open. You can send my contact info. But then um, I started with the emails that I sent out. Um, I didn't hide any of the email addresses. So all the email addresses are there. You can just go ahead and. Okay. Okay. And get okay. whatever you want from there. <clears throat> so sounds like a plan. Um, we have work to do. I thought that we were going to come up with some type of final decision. So. <laughs> I, I'm just stretching halfway it there. Thanks another to month. Albert, we halfway there. <laughs> yeah, I'm stretching it another month. Um, but next meeting we have to come up with a final um decision. And again, we still have that major action plan that we need to all read, get familiar with um what projects are in there and what type of grants are we going to seek. Um, and that's the action plan for the sustainable community. Um, that I'm talking about, usually, you know, their rounds are open usually in May. And then we can prioritize which ones we want to tackle first and which ones we may want to wait until next year to get grant. Okay. Um, and then there's always identifying funding sources such as county, state, or federal. So I think, um, I think we, 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 we we got something this meeting. At least we have some type of, you know, we we know where we're heading. <laughs> we know the project we we we're going to choose. We know what we're doing next. So the next meeting is on April 11. I will send out a meeting um, reminder 
but I wanted to ask everybody, is 6.30 better for everybody instead of starting at 6? Um, maybe because of conflicts or just to make sure that I get more attendees. Um, it's another... 30 is better for me. But I'll... Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, and I'm retired, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> just rub it in, why don't you? <laughs> so if 6.30 is better for everybody, I will send an email and I will just decide that most of the members have decided to start at 6.30. Um, and then is Monday still a good day for everybody? I know yes. they, they will talk about other days and schedule conflicts and other people being in other committees. So I think we can stick to Monday, but change it to 6.30. Okay. And then I would say, I mean, again, I talked about the town hall meeting. Um, you have to sign up in order to speak. They will give you about 90 minutes to speak. Um, it is being held in person, Wendell's Town Community Center, um, the 30th at 6.30. Go heavy, get your voices. And how, how do you sign up for it? I will send you tomorrow in my follow-up email the information. But okay, let me know. You. Actually, you know what? Let me put it in the chat room. Okay. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? I thought I had it somewhere. Thank you. What time does the meeting start? I'm sorry. Um, it's about at 6 30. Mm. I can quickly find the um because I'm I'm afraid I'm gonna forget and what is this? And it will be an excuse that you didn't sign up. <laughs> no, let no. Me, let me put uh, town hall at baltimorecounty.com. I mean baltimorecountymd.gov. Right there. Is the agenda for the meeting set entirely? There is no agenda. Um, the first part of the meeting, county executive doing this presentation about you know what has been done and stuff like that. Um, and then the second part of the meeting, um, they're giving each people that have signed up 90 minutes to speak and talk about the priorities or needs that should be in the in the budget. Are you sure it's 90 minutes? Uh, no, 90 not, seconds. <laughs> yeah, it's like 90 minutes. We'll be there till the end of the year. I was, I was getting ready. I was going to write it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's 90 seconds. Wendell's Town Community Center. Well, I want to thank you all for attending this meeting again and being part of the decision making. Um, I think we have exciting stuff coming up with all the beautifications and changing all this cheapscape furniture, trying to find money for more projects. So um, you have my information. Don't hesitate to um, contact me if you have any questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye, Bye now. Bye. Bye.